So welcome to episode two of season two of eSig 101, all about batteries. Now, here's the thing, depending on what AIO you get, or in some very few cases, stock oil sub-ohm tank kit you get. Don't worry, there'll be more about the differences between the two around about episode four or five, but just, just run with me here. Some of these kits, like this, well, not exactly this one, this one's actually got a battery in it, but some of these AIO all-in-one kits, have internal batteries. In other words, the battery is locked inside, you cannot remove it, and the only way you can charge that device up is to plug a USB cable directly into the side of it, which you can technically do with a mod, in other words, one of these things that takes an external battery. More about why you shouldn't do that later on in this episode. So, the reason I'm doing the battery one first, before jumping in, to the actual hardware side is most, I'm not gonna say all, most of the major larger AIOs, in other words, these things, and most of the larger stock coil sub-ohm tank kits, these things take external batteries. In other words, there's a battery door you open and there's two batteries or one battery, or in some cases three, or in some cases four, but you don't need to worry about the three or four battery mods. That's going way into the hobbyist side of vaping. So it's usually one or two batteries of some description. The reason I'm doing this episode now, before we get into the nitty gritty of the actual kits, is all about battery safety. These batteries that you get inside items like this is not like your double A's or your triple A batteries or your little square nine volt batteries. These batteries pack a punch. They pack a very big punch. And if things go wrong, if something happens to the battery, whether it's by accident or whether it's by carelessness, something like this could happen. Yeah, it's, it's not that good. It's really not that good. For instance, this Geek Vape kit that I'm holding in my hand takes two 18650 batteries. Now, they don't look all that big. They're a lot bigger than the likes of your triple A's or double A's, but these things have a very high amperage rating for a battery of its size. They also have a very high milliamp hour rating, which is the longevity of the battery very high longevity of the battery. So if something goes wrong with this, well, you, you see what happened with the little video clip that I popped in. This is why I'm putting this first. So this episode is all about what are these things, what are they all about, and basic battery care. If you care for the battery, look after the battery, and, you know, treat it with a little bit of respect. You won't get a fizzy bang going off, which you really don't want to happen. You really don't want that to happen with these batteries because when they fizzy bang, they fizzy bang big. And fizzy bang big is not all that good. No, it really isn't. Anyway, let's have a vape on this since I've actually got the batteries back in. So, what is the actual story with these cylindrical lithium ion batteries? Well, to, get, to dig down deep, let's head to the table cam. So what I've got next to me here is a selection of the more common batteries that you're going to find for a stock coil sub-ohm tank kit, like from Smoker, Vapor Esso, or for AIO type deals that take an external battery. This is your common 18650. Very, very common battery, these things. This one's from Molly Cell. They're a very good brand Molly Cell. Yeah, very good brand Molly Cell. And the way this thing works is the way you would expect. Positive at the top, there's your positive, and it's usually marked negative at the base. But it doesn't end here. That's your general common 18650. There were two newer battery types that were released onto the market uh, not that long. Well, in the grand scheme of things, not that long ago, but we're talking about four or five years ago now. Again, from Molly Cell, what we're looking at here is a 2700. Again, positive at the top. Well, that needs cleaned. 
are negative at the bottom. But it doesn't end there. Oh, hold on, it doesn't end there. There's also the 21700, which is the bigger brother of this. Here we go. 21700, again, Molly Cell, positive at the top, negative at the bottom. Nothing changes there. It's a battery. That's not going to change. Those are the three common sizes that you'll come across. The 18650 is still the most common one on the market for AIOs and for single or dual battery mods. But these two here, the 20 and 21700, are gaining more ground as the years progress on but it doesn't end there. There are mods in the hobbyist side of vaping which don't follow these three patterns. This big fella, yeah, you don't see that many 26650 mods around these days, but this big fella is a 26650 from iJoy. Now, there was a time when this big battery was a little bit more common, but nowadays you're not really going to come across that many 26650 mods. Again, positive at the top, negative at the bottom. If you're going into mouth-to-lung styles of vaping, in other words, the kind of vaping that you're doing with your little pod kit, it acts like a cigarette. There's these tiny little fellas. This is a 1400 milliamp power, 2350 from iJoy. Again, positive at the top, negative at the bottom. And if you want to go even smaller than that, you've got the cousin of the 18650, which is this, the 18350. Now, these two tiny little batteries, this is really not used that much now. The, the only reason the 2350 came out was for one, well, not one, a couple of iJoy's own mods. You can basically take the 23350 out of the scene because these, these just don't get used now. They don't get used. But this one, however, does. The 18350 along with the 18500, which is the bigger brother of this. But again, you really don't need to worry about these two for where you are right now which is the middle, the very middle of the vaping industry with your AIO or your stock coil sub-ohm tank kits. The, the three battery sizes that you're going to be commonly seeing is going to be these three, 18650, 2700, and 21700. And it's these three battery sizes that generally fit into your smock kits that you'll see in your local VPZ shop. They also generally fit into Vapor SO, Aspire, Anakin, and a whole bunch of other mainstream style kits that you're going to see on the market. There is really no advantage or major disadvantage uh, between the batteries that you're seeing. The argument could be made that 21700 batteries, which is this big fella here, 21700 batteries last that little bit longer than an 18650, because again, the bigger batteries, but the difference isn't really all that much. So you get a dual battery mod, which is a mod that takes two 18650s or two 21700s. You probably get an extra hour and a half to two hours use out of a dual 21700 mod than you'll get out of a dual 18650 mod. And that's about it, really. But where these batteries come into their own is because of that. See that? 30 amp rating on both the 2700 and the 21700 and it's a 25 amp rating for the Molly cell. The amperage rating is the max amps that can be drawn, continuously, safely drawn from these batteries. This is why the 20 and 21700s, uh, 21700 mods are a little bit more popular with the higher wattage vapor because these things can pack a punch. This can pack a punch as well, but not as much as these two. So what's the story with these things? Well, we'll start off with the common 18650 because this thing is basically the grandfather of them all. The 18650 was not produced for vaping. It was actually produced for the torch industry. Yeah, that's right. Flashlights, basically. It was produced for the torch industry. Also, if you're driving a Tesla, I don't know about the Teslas these days, but the earlier Teslas were using battery packs that had rows of 18650s wired up and stacked on each other. These things pack a punch, even though they look very small. 
they still pack a punch. 2,600 milliamp hour. If you get a whole load of these in line and put them into parallel, you've got 3.7 volts with a massive capacity. Or if you put them in series, you're doubling, tripling, or quadrupling the voltage, but you're keeping the milliamp hour and the amps. The 18650, however, is the grandfather of them all. This is the battery that's been around for a very, very long time. And it's one of the reasons that the earlier mods, more about mods when we, when we go to the uh, glossary for episode three, it's one of the reasons that early e-cigarette mods that were produced by the likes of Smock, Anakin, and more especially Aspire in the early days, decided to use the 18650 because they were a very, very common battery. Why are they called the 18650? In fact, why is this called uh, why is this called 21700? Well, the clue is in the size. If you look at the digits that you're seeing here, 18650, ignore the zero for now and look at the 1865. The first two digits, 18, is the diameter of the battery. So the 18650 is 18 millimetres in diameter. The 21700 is 21 millimetres in diameter. And this big fella that you don't really see getting used all that much, 26, 26 millimetres in diameter. That's what the first two numbers mean. The next two numbers, the 65, is, the 65 is basically 65 millimetres in height. So 18650, 18 millimetres in diameter, 65 millimetres in height, and the zero at the end means it's a cylindrical battery. If we head over to the 26650, 26, 26 millimetres in diameter, 65, 65 millimetres in height, and this is up against the 18650, as you can see, 65 millimetres in height as well. 21700, 21 millimetres in diameter, 70 millimetres in height, which is why this is slightly taller than an 18650, and again, the zero at the end means it's a cylindrical battery. And it's little brother, the 2700, 20 millimetres in diameter, slightly thinner, as you can see, but they're both 70 millimetres in height because they've both got 70 in the digits. So now you know what the numbers actually mean. It's basically the size reference for the battery. It was the easiest way to call them. Triple A's, double A's, D cells, PP9 cells, all that stuff you get in the domestic battery range. It was going to get too confusing calling these things by double A's, triple A's, D cells, all that. So they just went with 18650, which is the basic diameter and measurements of the battery itself. Now, these batteries are lithium ion. In fact, so are these, so is this, so are these two little fellas, and it's the basic common style of battery that you're going to see. Lithium ion basically means the battery runs off of lithium ions, strangely enough. There is a sandwich, I'm not going to get too technical here, but inside this battery is basically a wrapped sandwich of cathode, anode, and of course, insulator. And in there is lithium. And lithium ions go. Tra lithium ions travel in one direction when they are discharging, and they travel in the opposite direction when they're charging. It's the same as all batteries. Your Duracells, for instance, the same idea. It's a cylindrical battery with a cathode anode insulator and some kind of metallic ionisation or metallic ion transfer going on inside the battery. The big, big difference and the reason this episode is being made is because of that. 2,600 milliamp at 25 amp, and it gets even higher when you go up into the likes of the 2700s. 3000 milliamp hour, 30 amp. If something goes wrong with this battery, whether it's by accident or carelessness, yeah, well, you've seen the video clip that I popped in. This is not your double A or triple A, folks. These batteries pack a punch a very big punch in some cases. You've got to be very, very careful with how you handle these things. And handling of lithium ion cells is very, very important. The biggest hint, or not, not biggest hint, biggest bit of advice I can give you, and it's actually on these batteries or on the bigger batteries. In fact, it says it here, do not store 
and pocket or purse. The way these batteries work is there is a plastic shrunk wrap going round the outside of this battery. The entire outer shell, and we're going to get into this more deeply when we go back to the table cam, but the entire outer shell that the plastic wrap is surrounding is the negative. It's not just this down here. It's the whole shell that's negative. And this little bit at the top is positive. If you get this in your pocket, and again, do not put this in your pocket without a little battery case, but you can pick these up on Amazon for pennies. It's a simple little case that opens up like that. You pop your battery inside, close the lid, then you can put it in your pocket. But if you were to put the battery by itself in your pocket and a key, let's say you've got a key or a coin or something metal in your pocket and it was to nick this outer edge here, and then touch this along with the outer shell, you've got a direct shot. And you won't know there's a direct shot until you feel something extremely hot starting to happen in your pocket. By that point in time, it's going to be too late. The battery will start to vent and fizz bang. And you don't want a fizz bang in your pocket, folks. No, you really don't. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go down to the table cam and we're going to take this wrap off and then we're going to rewrap the battery but the reason we're taking the wrap off again it's it's a how-to kind of thing because over the course of you vaping if you're going to go into the whole stock coil sub ohm tank thing or you're going to go into the whole aio thing hold on what are you doing you're going to go into the whole aio thing give me a minute folks this thing is being a pain it's no, i don't want that i don't want that right oh, seriously <laughs> I don't want TC TCR I want power thank you so over the course of you using this there will come a time and it's happened to me I've lost count how many times it's happened to me but there will come a time where you will accidentally nick this outer plastic wrap. Having a battery with a nick anywhere on this body, and more especially around this outer ring here, is very bad. It's very, very bad, because again, the entire outer shell is the negative. The whole outer shell is the negative, with this point at the top being positive. If at any point there's a nick that happens on this plastic wrap, and the metal shell is revealed underneath, you're going to have to rewrap. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. And before I show you how to do that, we're going to have a look at what one of, the, uh, what one of these look like naked. Yes. So here's the thing. I don't actually have any battery that's got a nick on it because I'm usually very careful with these things. But just imagine, if I, you know what, I'll, I'll nick it purposefully. Where did I put my ceramic tweezers? Because I'm not going to do this with a metal set. Hold on. Let's put a little nick along here, just like that. Okay, something like that'll do. Now, you've accidentally nicked your battery. There's a little score there. You can actually see the metal coming through. When you see that on a battery, stop using it. Just stop using it, put it to one side by itself and pick up another battery. You're now going to have to rewrap this. Now, rewrapping these things is easy. I've got a couple of battery wraps here. They're actually NNA, New Nicotine Alliance. They're an advocacy group for vaping. In fact, they're an, they're an advocacy group just for nicotine in general. But you can pick up these little shrink-wrapped 18650 or even 20 or 21 700 wraps on Amazon. They sell packets of a hundred of these things for basically pennies. Rewrapping these things is easy. Never use metal tweezers or scissors or a knife, right? Ceramic or plastic is your best bet. The way I do it is I basically get ceramic tweezers, dig them underneath on the positive and score them out. And then I can get my fingernail in there and simply strip this off and then tear it all the way down. And what you're now seeing as a naked 18650. Now, 
This, and in fact this, if I take this plastic wrap off, will look very similar to this. And not just that, but if I was to take the plastic wrap off of this big fella, 26650, again, it would look very similar to this. What you're looking at here is a basically a metal cartridge, because that's what the base of this is. It's a metal cartridge. Think shotgun shell, that kind of idea. You've got a metal cartridge down here with a seam going around, going around the top. And the way that batteries are produced, the whole wrapped cathode and anode that's in a cylindrical shape, but it's wrapped, think toilet paper, it's not actually toilet paper, but you've got the central core and the cathode and anode is wrapped around that central core. So that whole lot, the whole cathode and anode that's wrapped is slid down inside this metal shell and this top part, you can see the join right there. This top part, once the positive has been basically attached to one end of the cathode or the anode, this top part is shoved down, pressed to fit, and the whole thing is sealed in one go. These things also vent. If I take, if I just take this little insulator off, if we look down in here, right, underneath the positive shell, are you seeing that indentation? The indentation that's right there? If something drastically bad was to happen to this battery and a shot happened. Again, need to remember here, folks, the way that these things are constructed, this part here is positive. This outer ring is negative. In fact, the whole battery shell is negative. That's why you never put these in your pocket unprotected. But if something metal was to come into contact with the positive here and the negative outside like that, straight across like that, this will start to short out. There is a pressure release valve, I suppose you can call it, underneath the positive plate here. So if pressure builds up inside, it will vent from the top. But the problem is, if there's a catastrophic thermal runaway, in other words, the actual shot is solid, it will go, it will just pfft. Fizz bang, and fizz bang is not good. Fizz bang is really not good. So yeah, this is, a, this is a naked battery. Never use a naked or nicked battery, wrapped battery in your mod. If you've got a nick in your battery, put it to one side and follow what I'm about to do. What you'll need to sort this is one of these. Well, you don't actually need one of these. This is basically a craft heat gun that I picked up from Amazon for 10 quid. You can use your, you can use your wife's uh, hair dryer, or if you're a woman, just use your own hair dryer. Hair dryer will work just fine, but I got a craft heat gun because they basically work quicker. First thing you want to do is get your battery wrap. You will want to open your battery wrap up. It's basically a shrink wrap plastic sleeve. That's all these are. Now, this little black ring is very important. If you got your battery wraps from Amazon, they probably didn't come with this ring. Keep the ring because this ring fits over like that. It's an insulator ring which stops the negative collar or stops anything metal coming into contact or digging in to the inside of the negative collar against the positive plate. You need this insulator ring. If you're taking your old wrap off, don't throw that insulator ring away because you're going to need it. Now, open this up and you want to feed... Oh, fine, fall off then. You want to feed this in and you want the same amount, yeah, the same amount of spare up here as you're going to get there. Now, you put your little insulator ring in, centre it, pop that to one side and plug this fella in. Have I got a plug socket anywhere near me? Yes, I do. Come here, you. Oh. I'll need to use you then. Let's pull you over. Right. This cable's quite not long enough, but it should be. So, switch you on. And what you want to do is you want to do the top first. There we go. And then run it down. And 
And there we go, folks. You've just rewrapped an 18650. It's just, now, you've seen me doing that and rubbing the negative. That way, you're, that way you're sure that this thing is clamped nice and tight down to the actual base. It's as simple as that, folks. It is, it's literally a 30, in fact, not even 30 seconds. It's literally a 20-second job to rewrap not just an 18650, but any of these batteries. And it is a very, very simple job, pardon me, to rewrap batteries. Again, if there is a nick anywhere on that wrap, it doesn't matter if it's at the bottom, doesn't matter if it's on the side, but more especially if that nick is on that top collar, don't use your battery. Just don't use it. Don't be tempted to wrap it in sellotape either. N no. No. Just, just... Put your battery to one side. Put, put it to one side. And this is why I've always said as well, if you are going to go down the road of these big kits or even an AIO that takes a single external 18650, it's always advisable when you get your new kit in along with your new battery and your battery charger, more about the charger in a couple of minutes, but it's, mo it's most advisable that if you get your new kit in, nip onto Amazon, and get a pack of 10 18650 or whatever battery size you've got, but get a pack of 10 wraps. They are literally pennies. They're literally pennies. And have those wraps in a drawer somewhere, so that way, if you accidentally nick your battery, you can repair that battery by rewrapping it there and then. You won't have to wait a day or two for Amazon Prime to deliver. You've got the wraps actually in your hand. It's only, it's, it's like less than a few seconds to order it from Amazon. Get it on Amazon Prime. It'll arrive there within a couple of days. It's always advisable to have the wraps with you. So before we end this, let's talk about battery chargers. Yeah. They're rechargeable. If they weren't rechargeable, it'd be kind of pointless using it in something like this. Now, I said at the very beginning of this that, yes, external mods, these big fellas, and external battery usage AIOs, these fellas, they all have a USB socket on them, which technically means that you can charge your battery actually inside these. Now, I wouldn't recommend it. I would not recommend it. It is true that battery charging, the charge board inside the boards for these things have improved vastly from the old days of 2014 and 2015. But if you want the longest possible life out of your 18650 or your set of 18650s in plural, it's always advisable to use an external dedicated battery charger. Now these chargers, I'm going to pick one up right now actually, these chargers come in all different shapes and sizes, right? This charger is from Xstar. It's a four bay charger, which basically means this can hold four batteries at one time and charge them all at the same time. You have two bay battery chargers, which are two bays. You can charge two batteries. On the opposite end of the scale, there's eight bay chargers, both from Xstar and from IntelliCharger, Nightcore, that can charge eight batteries at the same time, along with the Gear Falcon, which is a very, very expensive charger. I'm not going to say to you, buy this charger, just buy that charger. But what I'm going to say to you is this, there are two companies, two companies, well, technically three, but the third one's very expensive. I'll mention the third one anyway, right? But for the mainstream, you'll probably only need a 4-bay battery charger. You probably won't need an 8-bay unless you've got loads and loads and loads of AIOs and you all you use them all at the same time. So for a four bay charger, Xstar, X-T-A-R, that's the name of the company, or IntelliCharger from the Nightcore company. Those two companies are the mainstays when it comes to battery chargers. They do two bay, four bay, and eight bay. Now, on the subject of eight bay chargers, there's a third option, Gear Falcon. Now, I've got a Gear Falcon. It's G-Y-R Falcon. One word, no spaces. I've got an 8-bay Gear Falcon charger up at the house. They are very expensive, the Gear Falcons. Now, the reason 
that these battery chargers tend to be on the slightly expensive side. For instance, this, the X-Star Dragon charger, it just, it looks like a normal everyday charger. But these battery chargers, especially the ones that came out recently, like over the past three or four years, have got battery conditioning in them as well. One of the inherent problems with 18650s, 21700s and 21700s is the lithium ion technology that they run from. The batteries are baseline rated to run at a certain voltage fully charged. However, if the battery drops below a certain voltage, now in some cases, this has changed recently, but in some cases it could be 2.5 to around about 2.8 volts. If they drop under that, the battery, for all intents and purposes, is dead. Not just flat, but dead. In other words, if you pop that battery into an older lithium-ion based charger, it won't charge it. It just won't. It will not charge it. But newer chargers, like the Dragon Charger from X-Star, the newer 4B chargers from IntelliCharger, they've got something called battery conditioning, which brings dead batteries back to life. You won't really need to worry about that because if you're using your 18650 or your 21 or 2700 and regulated devices like this, these regulated devices, they just, they just stop working. If your battery gets too low, it will simply switch off. The mod itself will simply switch off and then you've got no choice but to put the battery back on charge. Where you could run into the problem of hitting into the dead battery power limit, we're going to be covering that in season four, which is way into 2023 when we're talking about mechanical mods. This is why I'm doing the battery safety bit first because this battery safety episode I'm going to be referencing a lot during season four, which is all about the hobbyist side of vaping. But for now, with your regulated device, you don't really need, you don't really need to worry about hitting the undervolt limit of the voltage rating of your battery. You only need to worry about it when you're using mechanical mods. What I'm going to say is it's up to you what your, what your choice of battery charger is going to be. But what I am going to say is this, get a 4B charger. Don't just say, oh, I'll get a 2B because I'm only using two batteries. Think of the future. What happens if you get a second AIO? Or what happens if you get a second dual battery box mod? Technically speaking, you've now got two sets of batteries on the go. You're going to need a 4B charger. And it's not as if 4 bay chargers are expensive. I mean, the price of the Dragon charger has went down significantly since it was first released. The only time I would suggest you get an 8 bay charger, like the fucking huge tower charger from IntelliCharger, or the 8 bay VC range from, uh, from uh, X-Star, or the 8 bay Gear Falcon charger, is if you think you're going to keep using this and you're going to consider vaping your hobby because give it a few months and if you just keep buying new mods in, yeah, you're going to need an 8 bay charger. But for the majority of you watching this, who's going to have maybe one dual battery box mod and one single battery AIO and you're going to be happy with that, you're going to need a 4 bay charger, 4 bay charger, X-Star or IntelliCharger. That's your two best bets for a decent, solid lithium-ion based charger. It's up to you which one you get. Simple as that. As long as it's from those two companies. I mean, I, mean, I suppose you can throw an E-Fest in there as well, but I've never been a fan of E-Fest chargers. Don't know why. Just never been a fan of them. X-Star and Telecharger. That's the two companies you can go for. Anyway. There is a little bit more to cover when it comes to batteries, but for season two, when we're dealing with regulated devices like that, what's been covered in this episode will be enough to make sure that you know all about battery safety. If you carry on into season four, which is gonna be in 2023, 
I'm going to be doing an, I'm going to be doing a follow-up episode to the battery safety that I'm doing here because we're going to get much more technical, especially for mechanical-based mods, which we're going to be covering in season four. But the as the episode stands right now, you know how to take care of your battery. Don't put it in your pocket. Just don't put it in your pocket. Get a little get a little battery holder like this. The minute there's a nick on your battery, put it to one side. Don't use it. Get yourself a battery wrap, peel off the outer layer, keep the insulator, slap the battery in, heat gun, hair dryer, Bob's your uncle. The basics of battery safety, that's what it comes down to. Anyway, that is it for season, not, not season, that is it for episode two. Now we're moving on to episode three, which is going to be a fun one, actually. The terms that you're going to be hearing people like me talking about when you're talking to other vapors about stuff like mods. Why is this called a mod? Why is this called a stock coil? What the hell is a stock coil? Why is this called an AIO? What the hell does that mean? General terms, a glossary, if you will, of vaping terms to do with vaping. On to episode three. <laughs> 